I thought you said circumcision. <laughs> Get it? Because it's... Uh, hello and welcome to the stream. Um, we are actually not going to continue with what we did last time. We're going to look at a completely different stack exchange question and try to answer it. And it actually is going to answer some other uh, stack exchange questions as well. Plus, it's going to, if it works, it's going to help me with one of my projects that I've been doing. Okay, so the... Um, the description here is we want to find the minimum distance given a geodesic and a point on the sphere. A geodesic is a great circle path. So if you're going on a great circle path between two cities, you and you have a third city that you want to know how close do you pass to that city. Um, as a really strange example, um, if you fly from Albuquerque to Tokyo, um, it turns out that you need to go through Dallas-Fort Worth. And as you fly from Dallas-Fort Worth to Tokyo, N Narita Airport, which is about 50 miles north of Tokyo, but roughly, um, you actually pass very close to Albuquerque itself. I don't know how close, but perhaps today we will answer that question. We will also be able to possibly answer these three questions. The question that inspired me to do this is this one. Uh, someone wants to calculate the waypoints between the departure and the destination. Um, I've had to make do my own sort of interpretation of this, which I think is correct, is um, he, he has a list, uh, or I have a list now, of uh, Federal Aviation Administration FAA facilities. And if you're flying between two of them, uh, from an airport to another airport, you might want to know which towers are, you know, which cities or towers are going to be closest to you as you make that flight. Now, of course, generally you can't always fly in a great circle path because uh, you know, you do have to make some alterations to avoid certain areas, including uh, you don't want to be flying over large cities, especially if you can avoid it by just taking a very slightly different route. Uh, or maybe you do want to fly over them. I don't know. Um, in any case, I think this is what the, uh, the, the questioner is asking. It will also answer questions like, um, this is actually a great question someone asked about, um, terrible diagram though, how to find the distance between a point and a line joining two points on the sphere. And this is exactly what we're trying to do. If you're flying from A to B, um, and I don't know if it'll look like this on, the, on a global map, it might. What's the closest you get to X? I mean, it's right here, but how do we do that formulaically? Um, and it answers this question here, where this guy goes through quite a bit of work to do this, um, and he might be right. And he again wants to know if you're flying from A to B, what's the closest you get to X. He wants, to, uh, w in both cases, they want to know the distance, and they also want to know, um, you know, where that point is on the flight that they'll be closest to X. Uh, and I once thought, you know, it might be cool when flying over to, um, to calculate this and have a radio station uh, play a certain song when I flew over that location. Never actually got around to doing that, and I don't think it would really work because even short songs are two to three minutes long, and airplanes fly really fast, and I don't know how good FM reception is 30,000 feet in the air. Uh, now, this is actually a not very useful page that tells you how to compute the great circle, but that is not what we're asking. Uh, we're asking the, a much deeper question about when is a point closest to a great circle path. And we're going to make standard assumptions uh, that you know we're not dealing with some pathological case where the two points are on the opposite end of th ends of the globe, and therefore are anti antipodes, 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 uh, antipode, antipode, antipode. They're opposites of each other. Uh, in which case, there is no a unique. Every path is, you know, there's no unique great circle path. We're not going to uh, do that. Turns out I've actually done some work on this previously, and it got really, really complicated. So there's a good chance we're going to fail today. Um, and this will nicely balance out our sort of success we had earlier with a totally different problem earlier today. So I'm very excited. We're looking to fail here. Uh, we're looking to show that I'm not as smart as I think I am, which I, I, no one is as smart as I think I am. Um, but let's go ahead and get, get started. And I'm going to go ahead and do a completely uh, new approach here, or I'll say different approach. Um, and I'm going to still use the time, that I'm, time zone I'm in where it's still the 3rd of January. It's 4th of January in the GMT. And we will make this a comment. Now, this is Mathematica, as you can see with the .m file, uh, but we're going to try to do it in Mathix. So, really good, strong here, uh, difficult problem that I haven't been able to solve with Mathematica. We're now going to do in Mathix, although we may go to cloud.wolfram. So, so there is that. Um, so, the first thing is we might as well define our points. We're going to say, um, 
Um, and I sort of went back and forth on what to call these. Uh, I think we're just going to say la long one, long two, to well that's completely wrong. Sorry, long one, that one to long two, that two, closest to. Um, and I'm already unhappy with this. Hang on one second. Um, I kind of want to use like X, Y, and Z because the the numbers get confusing since we're already doing numbers. Let's just say uh, I this I'm going to regret this, but let's closest to long C, lat C. So there they are. Those are the three points. We're flying from B to D. Wow, I actually meant to make that B, C, but anyway, that's fine. Flying from B to D, and we want to know how close we get to point C. Um, we could put it. We could put this on GeoGebra 3D, but I don't think we will. Okay. So first things first. Um, um, we can take the spherical coordinates, and we're going to go ahead and assume that there's a radius of one because the radius of the Earth doesn't matter in this case. Also, at some point, we might end up using instead of the distance, the distance squared, because since we want the shortest point. Uh, the distance squared, if that's shorter than another distance squared, the distances are also one is less than the other. It's a, there's, there's a name for that. I think there's a, it's a less than preserving function or something. It's not monotonic. I mean, it, it's, there's some, there, there's some word that means, um, fx less than fy implies gx less than gy. Maybe we will ask, um, let's actually put that down on our list to bother someone with, to do. If fx, fy implies gx less than gy, what is the name of the relation between f and g? And it's, uh, there's, there's some, there's some magic here. Um, that, that's there. But anyway, so point B is we're going to take, um, now we're going to assume everything here is in radians because we're not really specifying anything. Uh, so this is longitude, latitude, and we're just one. And once again, I am forgetting to use my mathematical notation. And then, of course, uh, point D. And even point C actually is like that. But we're not going to worry with point C. Well, we will. Let's go ahead and do that for point C. Point C is going to turn out to be a little bit special, though. Because we are, we're actually, um, we're actually, uh, going, we're not drawing the path to it. Um, and it would be good if we actually used the correct values here. Um, okay, so far so good. Uh, let's see if Mathix can handle this using the x spherical to XYZ um, uh, coordinates uh, that I defined in my BC lib. So we should be SPH to XYZ should be a working function. I mean, God help us, but. So let's see what PTB is. That looks pretty good. PTC is this. Now, we're going to just say that the uh, the great circle between point B and D is going to be the straight line that goes through the Earth that connects point B and D projected back to the surface. This is not a time, this is not a distance preserving, um, this is not a distance preserving uh, curve. Uh, in other words, when you're, uh, just because you're moving like let's say point one along the line between B and D, a uh, one-tenth of the way, that doesn't mean you're going one-tenth of the way in your great circle journey, because the closer you are to the center of the Earth, uh, the greater the, uh, the projection is going to expand your distance. So this is just a path, but we don't really care uh, about that it's not a um, constant distance path, because we're not, we don't need that for our purposes. So the constant distance path, we can very easily say path at time t, is equal to point B times and I always get this wrong. Um, I think it's this because at time zero, this is point B, and at point time one, it's it's uh, PTD minus PTB. Um, yeah, this will be just point D. So let's see if it likes that. Oh, it likes that. Okay, path zero, yay. Path one. Uh oh. Um. 
let's actually do that again. Path zero. And now we just want to go back from the spherical... Wait, hang on. Oh, dear. Um... Yeah, we need to go from these back to um, spherical coordinates, of course. And then we need to simplify, and I am already unhappy. Not cool. So path of zero is this. X, Y, Z to spherical coordinates of long B, lat B, one. that of course should have been spherical to XYZ coordinates is the same and yet when I take path 0 and I do the opposite XYZ spherical coordinates I do not get back what I should be getting back uh, maybe and it, I don't even think it simplifies so not cool at all not not cool very very uncool so we we, we cheat and we go to Wolfram Alpha sorry we go to Wolfram Cloud um, which is different than Wolfram Alpha um, and I think I'm logged in, so we just go to a, uh, always go to a new notebook. Loading, and I don't need this crap. Crap be gone. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put it in here. Again, not super happy about this because it is not, as we have said before, um, open source. It is free, but it's not open source. Um, so let's do this. And I guess we didn't actually ask for any printout. So path zero. Oh, and I think it's going to complain now because, um, oh. Um. Okay. I think uh, I don't actually have spherical to XYZ defined. So hang on. What the hell? It's being weird now. Um, this was supposed to be in one, but let's see, do I have spherical to XYZ defined? I don't think I do. So let's go ahead and define that over here. We'll need to get that from bclib.mathix. Okay, come on. Oh no, because I put all my lib libraries at the top level. Just to frickin' confuse myself. Um copy region, I guess. Nope. Matter W. Put this over here. Um, get rid of this. Delete. Um, get rid of this. Delete. And then just print point B for right now. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, good. So now path of zero should be that. Good. Uh, and if I convert that back from XYZ to spherical coordinates, I should get back uh, the latitude and longitude of, of, yeah, of point B. Or I should get this hideous formula that looks nothing like it. All right, stand by. So you can do a little bit of simplification there. Yeah. And I guess what I need to specify up here is my conditions. You must release the hostages in five minutes. Those are my conditions. Uh, the conditions here are... Um, la lo uh, let's see. We'll, yeah, longitude of B is greater than zero. Longitude of B is... Um, I guess we're going to use longitude, which is a minus pi, less than pi. Uh, and that's true for all three of them, by the way. Uh, longitude C, greater than minus pi. Longitude C, less than pi. This also makes them real numbers, which is I th think the thing I think it really needs to, to simplify is the fact that these are all real numbers. Okay. Um, and then I'm not going to tab here, but let's see. And now the latitudes... Latitude B is going to be greater than negative pi over 2. Uh, it's also going to be less than pi over 2. Same with latitude C is going to be greater than minus pi over 2. 
latitude C is going to be um, less than pi over 2, latitude D greater than negative pi over 2, latitude D less than pi over 2. And on the off chance I did that right, we should now be able to pass it as a parameter to simplify that says simplify with these assumptions. Doing that, we have So close. Mm. So why is this unhappy? Longitude of B. Uh, this is a very simple error because um, if you divide these two things, um, you get the uh, the. Why do we get one over the tangent? That's not right. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and risk full simplify. Mm hmm. So the arctan of cosine over sine is not the original number. I, I've either done something wrong here. Mm, or it just doesn't like the way it's simplifying. Um, so in both of those cases we have arctan of the inverse of the tan instead of arctan of the tan, which is kind of weird. Let's see what happens if we put in one. That should give us the same thing for um, point D. Okay, it works for point D, but not for point B, and uh, the reason is almost definitely that I messed something up here. Longitude B, longitude B, longitude C, longitude C, longitude D, longitude B, rhythm. I'm not seeing what I did here that would make this um, make this work for path 1, but not path 0. That is just freaking strange. Um, so let's momentarily forget about that. That's going to give us nothing, because I put a semicolon at the end of it. So let's just look at now um, path 0 and path 1 as, as paths. Um, They look so freaking similar. Um, all right, well, let's just apply x, y, z to spherical to this one and to this one. I mean, they're freaking identical. Get a clue. Okay. Um, and that, that's ugly. I mean, that's that's understandable. I think we can apply simplify to a list. And what does that give us? Damn! Now, if anyone sees what I'm doing wrong here, why it's working great for D and not for B. Longitude B. LNG B. Latitude B. Latitude B. C, D, D. I don't see it. I do not see why this is misbehaving. So we're already in trouble here. Um, in particular, we're in trouble here because this is the wrong direction. Um, in other words, you have arctangent of cosine x sine x that is not um, well okay that's not even close to what it is oh I'm sorry actually I could be wrong because I think this is y over x so I think this is actually a portion of this is actually okay so let's just see this is what I want and that should be yep that doesn't work okay so now we're going to make the assumption that I know we are going to regret making which we shouldn't even have to make which is that the arctangent of x comma y is the arctangent of y over x. Um, 
and I think I can get away with that because great circles will never be longer than 180 degrees. We're never going to go more than halfway around the world. If we do, we should have taken the flip path. Um, so we'll just say call it rules equals arc tan of x comma y can go to arc tan. So this is how we write these rules in Mathematica. Uh, arbitrary x and y can go to arc tan of y over x. So we can convert the two argument form to the one argument form, which is technically not correct, but um, but I think it's acceptable in this case because th we are we ha we're under limitations that will make this true. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go x y z to spherical path uh, to spherical of path zero, given rules, and let's just get rid of this crap here, and that will give us. Oh, I didn't put a little thingy in front of um, didn't put a little thingy in front of uh, semicolon here, so it, it did repeat this out for us. Okay, this is not great because we now have arctan of tan. Um, but let's see if we can from there simplify under the given conditions. You've got to be freaking kidding me! I mean. Wow, that's strange. All right, let's write the other way then. Let's simplify the expression itself first, and then we'll apply rules. Just really... And yet, if I do it with path 1, you're frickin' perfectly happy. So someone have uh, Wolfram Alpha beaten to death over this, please. <sighs> I guess we could try full simplify and then rules, but at this point I don't think that's going to help. Alright, we're just going to say full simplify, we're going to leave it at this. Uh, we know that it's the same thing. Um, that's really annoying, though. If, I mean, if we know that the cosine of lat, if lat b is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, just intrinsically, this should simplify uh, to, um, god damn it. God, I hate this thing. I, I don't think even Mathematica is this bad about this. Um, anyway, let's see what if we do that to path 1. Obviously, we'll get what, exactly what we want by non-symmetry. All right. Enough of that. We can now look, for example, at path point 5. Uh, and I guess we don't need this line because it doesn't freaking do anything. Um, and again, very messy looking thing, which is fine. Um, so what we want to know, basically, is the distance between, or the distance squared between, uh, path of t, so the distance at time t, is equal to be the uh, it's equal to b is not going to be the norm of um, path t minus uh, point c uh, because uh, that is the that is the norm inside inside this is the inside the earth norm. However, it is enough because and we're going to actually square it. It's, it's going to be enough because if the norm is shorter inside the, the circle, the projection will also be shorter. In other words, it's acceptable to look at three-dimensional uh, straight-line distances it w if you're just comparing which one is longer than the other. And this will give me this beautiful thing. That is gorgeous. I mean, that is just hideous. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, but we're going to be a little bit more clever take the square of that because we don't... Uh, we don't... Um, all we need to do is to know is where the shortest distance is, and that can, can be done um, with the square. So do this. And you'll notice the beautiful, complete lack of frickin' simplification here. Holy moly.
Is this really... Hmm, all right. And this is, I think, where I got stuck last time, so this is not surprising in any way. Um, I want to look at path T and PTC, and I'm, I, sh I mean, they're both going to be three-dimensional vectors. Um, and they are pretty ugly. And now I'm going to subtract them as vectors, which is still perfectly reasonable. Um, and when I say perfectly reasonable, I mean, oh my fucking god. Okay. And... Let me, let me, I don't think you can do this in Mathematica. I don't know if you can square a vector, if it understands what you mean when you're doing that. But let's find out. I'll be darned it does. Okay, so I could take these numbers, square them. And then to sum them up, I need the, the what Mathematica calls a total. And this is going to be like literally the same thing, but yeah, that is that is one ugly looking number. Um, and I'm just sort of curious if this is actually the same as what we had earlier. I'm going to put a simplify in front of this, and it, if it's not zero, I will not be surprised, but I will be slightly annoyed. Holy moly. Okay. And I guess we'll put, con you know, we'll say under these conditions. I don't think that's going to help, though. Jesus flippin' Christ. Alrighty. Um. That's insane. I don't even think the rules are going to help here because I don't think there's any arc tan tan here. Okay. That's really ugly. So the dist, well, we're going to call it dist 2 because it's not really the distance, it's the distance squared. Um, and I guess I want to see what the formula is, but it's hideous. That's not that bad, actually. Now, of course, what we actually want is we want to know for what value of t does this distance become minimal. Uh, I'm going to ca throw caution to the wind and see if we can use um, Mathematica's... Yeah, we can't. So we'll say t starts off at between 0 and 1. And that, in theory, minimize 0 is not a very... Yeah, no, it's not, I know. Okay, so we'll do it the calculus way, which is what I expected we'd have to do. I've got a rabbit up my hat for this one, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, rabbit in my hat. I don't know what I've got up my hat. Um, there is something we might be able to do here. So we're going to say d dis 2t is equal to the derivative of dis 2 of t with respect to t. That's the thing we want to set equal to zero. Uh, that is also the thing that is so freaking ugly oops, that it is just going to be a nightmare here. But we might be able to do something with it. So this is the how, as t changes, how the distance squared changes. So now, now all we have to do... <laughs> oh, I like the way, I like the way it, um... It <laughs> whatever the inverse is, we don't really know. But, you know, if there were one, we'd give it to you. All right, one more time. That is, oh, I'm sorry, d dis 2. I, I, that is a mistake on my part. This system cannot be solved with the methods available to, of course it cannot be solved with the methods available to solve. Because you are stupid. Um, another way to do this, and I think this is the way I ended up sort of solving it, you can, you can do a linear rotation 
um, just as we did actually in the uh, Jupiter Moon pr problem, so that uh, B and D end up being both on the equator and then finding, uh, you know, and C becomes something else. And then you could just basically pick off what C is based on that transformation. Uh, and I think that is, if you look over here, um, back where we did this, this is one of the approaches I use here. Um, I don't know where, though. No, th th I use the rotation matrix uh, that is, uh, that, that, uh, I, I can't find it anymore, but there's a rotation matrix that will do what I want, and then we can just pick off the values of, uh, because then they'll, they'll be not on the equator. Um, so I guess that's kind of like the best Bessel method for solving this problem. Um, but I am sort of unhappy because I still think this other method here should work. This should not be uh, this complicated. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at path T again. And I'm going to see if it simplifies any. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We didn't. That's just an error message. So this is what path T is. Pretty ugly. I don't think it's going to simplify even under the given conditions. That's actually not too bad. We got a. Mm, did we? get a minus 1 plus t pulled out of every element, or just the first two elements? Um, well, let's see if this does any... Oh, well, no, no, that doesn't make sense. Let's see if this actually helps simplify it a little bit. I, I'd never thought about that. Um, okay, no, because the last term doesn't have a a uh, minus one plus t minus one in front of it. Um, so these two we would get cancellation, this one we would not. Okay, so that was not a great plan. Um, and the weird thing is, well, they all have a kind of a dependency on... Alrighty. Um, now one thing we can assume uh, is that longitude of B is zero because we can shift, we can do a, a, a east-west rotation so the longitude of B is zero, then the longitude of D becomes longitude of D minus longitude of B. But we can make that simplification. I don't think that's going to help, by the way. Um, I just like to say that we can do it. So this becomes shiny. And I probably need to get rid of this, because it's just, if it's not going to solve it, we, there's no point in forcing it to try to solve it. Okay, this is good. Now let's see if we can simplify it further using the conditions that we have. Probably not. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a full simplify here, but I just, I really don't think it's going to simplify any further. And it doesn't. Now, because we're sort of experimenting, I'm just going to start using temporary variables here. So this is the temp distance at t with the assumption that b is 0. And so then we can say the temp... These are, by the way, the timestamps in Albuquerque, which is uh, 7 hours behind GMT, if you're wondering where I'm getting this stuff. But just made up. All right, so now we want to look at the derivative. I'm going to go like crazy here and, and say simplify the derivative based on cons, on the conditions we had earlier. I don't know if that's going to help any. I don't think that even did what I asked it to do. So this and Oh, that's not too bad. Um, the slight badness there being that it doesn't appear to depend on D, on T, which is, you know, not great given that, uh, that we're trying to find where it's zero and the only thing that can change is T. So clearly something went wrong there, but let's go ahead and see what 1946 T looks like. Um, okay, that, that does look correct. Um, 
That looks fine. And then why don't you tell us what you think the frickin' derivative is? Control X, Control V. All right. Something is not right. So let's just do this and see what that is. I don't... Yeah, there's something wrong here. Path of T, given that longitude B goes to zero under the given conditions. That should not be... This has no mention of T in it. Um, yep, that's not good. All right, let's see what happens if we put, let's take a look at temp uh, 1946. Um, so that looks really good, actually. And let's see what this is. That also looks really good. Um, let's see what the mid midpoint is. Looking gorgeous there. Um, um, and I think I know what's wrong. This is the path of T. I'm not what I meant to do, of course. I meant um, the distance to T is what we're looking for here. Um, or the distance squared. Yeah, the path is just a point on the path. So that's that's not good. Um, yeah, this sadly looks a lot better. With, so even with longitude B at zero, it's still pretty ugly. Um, and I bet you anything we can't really solve. Uh, eh, this will not be able to solve it. Doesn't know how to solve it. Okay. Um, I mean, in theory, we can, of course, change some of these things to not have cosines and stuff in them uh, because they're just numbers. Uh, I don't know if that helps, though. Um, for example, you know, right now we have path of t is equal to this, we could, since we know this is just a known number, and this is just a known number, um, and this is just a known number, and this is just a known number, and all of this is just a known number, that's interesting. Uh, I'm suspicious, though. Um, and then we need to think about it. C is, of course, just a known number as well. Uh, I am very suspicious of this, though. Um, I mean, I don't think it's failing on the fact that it doesn't know how... I mean, it doesn't even need to undo these cosines. So I don't think it's failing on that. On the other hand, um, uh, something rotten in the state of Denmark here. On the other hand, this is very easily like a very simple problem if we treat these things as constants, right? I mean, let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. So what if we said instead path of t is equal to, um, that's just some number a plus b times t. The second number is c, uh, just a number of some sort, times d times t. Yeah, this is looking really kind of suspicious here, f times t. 
So that could be the path of t very easily. We'll actually just say dist of t here. Dist 2 of t, in fact. Um, and then we subtract off, you know, point c, which is a known value, x, y, z. Um, and then we square this. Um, oh, actually, I'm curious to see what that is now. Um, and I guess we're not going to ask you to solve this because you clearly can't. And we don't want to mess up with our everything, anything else. Okay. Um, I, there's something very suspicious about this. Um, but let's proceed. And of course, the distance is going to be the total of, the, that's actually the distance squared is going to be the total of these. Um, Oh, that's it. Okay. And there's something very, very strange here. I I don't believe this, and I'm doing it. So, well, let's proceed down this um, path. But let's be prepared to be disappointed. Okay. And then temp 1954 of t will be the derivative with respect to t. That's just this. Uh, suspicion is brewing in my mind now. Because um, it can't be this simple. Alright, but let's see if we can do it. Solve temp t equal equal zero for t and that should be a trivial solution. Yep. So that is a fascinating thing I did not think about doing before. Um, and then we know what A, B, C, D, E, F, we know how to count. Um, uh, everything is. So I would take a, like to take a second to be impressed with myself here, although I suspect something's very wrong. Okay. That's enough time to be impressed with myself. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually reduce the problem to this using translations. So let's go all the way back over here. Where I don't think we care about any of this stuff anymore. Um, we don't need this. We don't need this. We do need this, but only temporarily. And we do need this temporarily. We do need all of this. And now... Um, Let's see. Do we do we want? Where's path of t? Where did I put the frick is path of t? Um, okay. So I said the path of t is equal to uh, point b plus um. This is not correct. I think it's actually this. And I think with this, we can... Did we actually do this in, in our little Emacs thingy? Yeah, we did. Point t to plus t, plus t times this, yeah. Okay. And now the rest of this, I think we're going to have to rewrite anyway. So what does this do? Does this give us, this does give us the magic, um, uh, this does give us the magic ugly formula. So now here's where we're going to go uh, gingham style. No, we can't go gingham style. Uh, here's though where we go um, with our rules. So what we're going to say here is this sucker, okay, well that's, that's not cool. Control V. Okay, why doesn't it let me do that? Okay, so hang on. Okay, it really doesn't like. Oh, now it has a little quick. This is gonna kill me. Undo, undo. Didn't mean to do that.
And I know, I know, I know I shouldn't be worried about this. Let me see if I can get into Emacs and then we can push it back. Oh, wow. And when it says copy to clipboard, it means a clipboard that it's made up by itself. Unless there's an edit paste here that I could do. Why? Oh, okay. <sighs> nope, hang on, didn't mean to do that. I like the way it's like a red box. Um, alright, hang on. Um, wait. Let me do a few, let me go ahead and get rid of some of this crap that we don't need. Gotta be careful not to get rid of the crap we do need. Get rid of this. I think, I think this is, this is good. And then I want to print out Path of T. There we go. Oh, no, you don't. Seriously? I mean, seriously, seriously? You're going to do this to me? Uh, undo. Okay. So clearly, they, they hate me. And they won't let me cut and paste this, which... Not horrible, actually, because um, I'm going to probably have to type some of this in myself. Okay, so we're going to decide that um, cosine lat b. God damn it, I'm so freaking lazy. Hang on. Um. I think we can do it from here. Alrighty. And again, we're just we just need this for cut and paste. So rules equals cosine lat b times cosine ln b. Finally goes to what we'll call a. Um, T times this na nasty looking thing here. Um, hang on, that's cosine, cosine long, plus this hideous thing here. Um, yeah, because this has it in slightly different order than Mathematica does. Not a huge deal, but uh, it's something to watch out for. This expression here. goes to B and let's just see if that what that does before we do anything else and of course this is not really code this is just something we cut and pasted so let's just do this path T given rules let's see if that helps us a little bit oh and I guess I didn't put a semicolon at the end of rules so it's trying to still um, see now that is gorgeous that is just gorgeous um, that's almost too gorgeous. Although I think this this is actually the fact that Mathematica can't solve it without me giving it this transformation is really really bad. But um, uh, but that's life. I don't know. Um, okay, so let's go back to the third one of these things, which is going to be minus. Careful here. Yeah, minus this sucker, and there's I know there's a minus there I, that I didn't copy over. We'll get it in just a sec. So that we're gonna say is going to be the new C, and then that's the thing. That, okay, and then there's this sucker here, which can be the new. can be the new D. Uh, let's see. Alright, well, let's see how we're doing here. 
checking on progress, as they would say if I was British, which I'm not. But I could be. Wouldn't mind being British. And I, okay, so I guess the last one here, the big difference is no, no, we still have the exact same thing. Sign of lat B is the. Uh, this might be worth a, a post to the. Come on, seriously? This might be worth a post to the Mathematica group saying, uh, you know. Um, that's E. And this sucker here can be considered F. And so with all that, um, expression one has no opening thingamabobby. Well, yeah. And that is gorgeous. And the fact that Mathematica can't figure that out is very depressing. Unless there's something horribly wrong that I'm doing that I'm not seeing. Um, hmm. Well, we don't even need rules here anymore because we got rid of those. Oh, no, I'm sorry, we do. These are different rules. <laughs> these are, yeah, these are the rules that make it into this. So the der 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 derivative of this with respect to t is... Uh, that I don't believe. And I think that's actually because I'm looking at the path and this one what I want to do. So the path of t at this point is given rules. I think I'm going to mess something up actually. Okay, that's the path of t. We now need to subtract it from um, the point b. Uh, so this is the path of t. Uh, this is where you are at any given point. Um, and now we want to subtract it from... Um, want to subtract it from PTC, the point C. We want to see what the distance is. Well, we're actually going to look at the norm squared here, but let's, let's look, look at this real quick. So this is this. Uh, we want the norm of this probably squared. I don't know if we want to actually get this ugly with... Yeah, let's do that squared. And now all we have to do here so we'll call this temp 206 of t. Uh, this is the... Uh, yeah, this is the distance at any point t from point c. Uh, we'll let this be the derivative of temp 2060 with respect to t, I don't even think we need to simplify that because we already have so many simplifications going on. Okay, ugly. And in fact, ugly enough that we're probably going to actually change this in just a sec here. Solve temp 2007 t equal equals zero with respect to t. Ta-da! Instantaneous failure. But we're not done yet. Um, because point C is just a known point. Um, I'm going to print it just for reference. Okay. And this might be one of the silliest things we've done here because we're literally just going back from spherical coordinates to, um, to rectangular coordinates. But you know, Sometimes a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And this is not correct. This is times cosine of that. Oh, you know what? I should probably, because just for my own sanity, put multiplication signs here instead of just using concatenation to mean multiplication. Um, 
something that I don't recommend people do anyway, because the um, the priority of concatenation is not, or juxtaposition, whatever you want to call it, is not well defined. And that actually has caused some problems on the internet recently with people saying, what is this value equal to? Um, all right. Cosine lat C times sine long C goes to Y and sine lat C goes to Z. And then no spoilers, so we won't actually go and do this. We won't do this. There's no need to do this. And then we just want to see what temp 2006 looks like. Dun, da, da, da. Anti R. Uh. Temp 2017 equals. Oh yeah, because of course this is not a uh, comment in in Mathematica. It is in in C, but not in math. Actually, it is in Pascal. It's not even in C. In C, it's forward slash star. Uh, so crazy. Um. Interesting. But. Oh, because we don't have any rules saying these are all real numbers. So the um, the fact that we have absolute values here is actually uh, not necessary. But let's go crazy here and do point by point different squared. Gorgeous. Add that sucker all up. And now we have the distance. Be careful, we have the distance squared here. And that looks really nice. And now we can say that the derivative of is um, this. And we're not going to solve it yet. We'll leave a little mystery here. And so, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not kosher. Alrighty, looks good to me. Although at this point I'm wondering if we can just say minimize temp 2006 of t with respect to t. And I wonder if it's, it's simple enough for it to just say yeah, this is it. It's thinking or I didn't hit return correctly. Alright, hang on. Okay. Now there's going to be one bugaboo here. If t is less than 0 or greater than 1, uh, we have to kind of shove it into 0 or 1 because uh, you can't be closer than the beginning of the trip. This should really not be an issue for what we're doing, though. Um, here we go. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, because th these are some special cases where, um, where you know, if something is zero, then we, we have some special cases here that we don't want to deal with. Um, so that is hideous. We don't want that. Instead, let's do it using derivatives, and we'll get the general case. Um, so let's do that. That should not take long. I haven't even asked you to solve for anything yet. Hang on. Oh, that's why, because I still had that other thing there. Okay, so that looks that looks trivially solvable for T. Um, just set the derivative equal to zero, and I you, you kind of sense something wrong is going to happen here. Um, but that looks gorgeous. I don't know if that simplifies any. Um, I don't think it does. Let's see. I'm, I don't really think it does, though. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. That is not an ugly-looking answer at all. So.
how do we, I'm going to, we could implement this in Mathix, we could implement it in Mathematica, uh, well, I mean, yeah, or Mathematica, Wolfram Cloud, um, but I actually, my goal here was to implement it uh, in Perl, uh, more specifically, um, right, because we're actually going to solve a larger problem that is definitely going to be solved in Perl. So, let's go ahead and do BC Geodesic P. Now, I'm going to write a subroutine, which means, in theory, I should be moving it, well, I'll, I'll say that right here, in Perl. To do move subroutine to BC lib, because it's not going to be a standalone function. Um, and since it's not going to be a standalone function, it's going to be. Why do I say geodesic? Should I say a great circle? I, I, that's like very pedantic. Geodesic. Um, geodesic to point, but that's. Geodesic to point min dist. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, and it's also going to return the, 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 the where that minimum distance occurs, uh, which is not which is not difficult. I think. I don't know. Maybe. Um, well, I know I say GC for great circle some other places. GC to point min dist. Um... No, I think this is sufficient, actually. Let me quickly check to see this is how I'm supposed to do... I, I forget how I do Perl docs sometimes. I think this is correct, though. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I had a habit of sending everything in as a list, but let's, let's see if we can do this. Um... Uh... Longitude b latitude b longitude d <laughs> latitude d longitude c latitude c okay given two points given three points b c and d return the minimum distance at return, okay. Uh, we consider the great circle between, uh, consider the great circle between, return the point where the great circle between B and D is closest to C and the value at that, and the, and the distance at that point. Uh, return the point on the great circle between B and D that is closest to C and the distance to C from that point. That's what we want to do, I think. Um, and I would put a shout out here to uh, bcgeodesic.m, but I'm not going to. And as always with Perl, we do this. Um, and it's, it's not a great language. I mean, it's an okay language. But I'm so familiar with it. It's just so much easier to do. One, one, one issue here is we're actually going to be doing, um, we're going to be solving this guy's problem more specifically using the subroutine. Uh, so uh, that's why we, we kind of have to, um, uh, that's why I'm being a little bit careful here in terms of, uh, of uh, using Perl because I know I'm going to need to use Perl for the other thing uh, and more more directly. Okay, so we're our list of substitutions, which we will call very. Please, please, please don't do this to me. C, Control Y. Okay. So in Perl, got to be a little careful here because our syntax is not the same, and. You sort of, you sort of want to ask the question um, after I've gotten my answer here uh, in Wolfram. Could I put back these uh, these values to what they used to be? In other words, take these rules and invert them, um, and then plug them back in here and see what we get. 
And the answer to that is you probably could, and it might even yield something interesting, um, and I'm tempted to sort of do that, but... Um, ooh. Well, crap. I said it, and I wasn't going to do it, and now I want to kind of do it. Um, that is just the value of t, of course. We don't. We need to actually get the uh, the distance at t, but that should not be too difficult. Okay, hang on. I mean, we could always calculate it directly, because um, that's a point on the great circle there, um, and then we could just plug that in. God, that gets really messy, though. All right, so I'm gonna put. I mean, that is gorgeous. That is just cosine lat 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 um, times this sucker type. I mean, all of this stuff could really collapse very nicely into something um, beautiful. So, no, don't do it. Yeah, crazy man. All right, we're going to do it. Of course, we're going to do it. Of course, we're going to do it. So we're going to copy this, then we're just basically going to reverse all the rules. So rules two, A goes back to this, B goes back to this, um, I was going to make a joke about C goes back to the old man, like an old man in the sea, but I don't think anyone remembers that book, it's Ern Ernest Hemingway. D goes back to this. Yeah, this is this is sort of good hard waste of time here because um, we solved the problem and now we're not going to actually do anything with it until we've made things worse so this is sort of classical um, why I will can never really go back to work because this is the kind of shit that no one likes this is the kind of shit that gets people saying well you've already solved the freaking problem why are you making things worse and it's because I have a mathematical curiosity to see if this all this work actually simplified. It, the, the, the real problem itself is much simpler, and this just will show how simple it was to begin with. Um, okay. So we do this. Um, let me do this real quick. And let's just say solution of T... equals t given this and then I'm just going to print it out for for reference but okay gorgeous now we go over to rules two and make this thing so hideous that no one wants to look at it Jesus fucking Christ now we're going to simplify this and that doesn't really look a hell of a lot better than what we had Um, now we did have some rules up here that I got rid of that said you can make some assumptions here about uh, B, D, and stuff like that. Um, um, okay, I guess we kind of do need those simps. We'll call them simps in this case. Uh, because... Um, The real one that we need is that these are all real numbers because you can do things with real numbers that you can't do with um, that you can't do with uh, imaginary numbers. Simplifications you can make. Let's see, Let the the others were sort of important, but they're not really that important. So there's this. We that we do know, um, and that 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 is a reasonable thing to do there. So let's see if we can get any like uh, trig trigonometric simplifications going on. Uh, yeah, not really. This is one ugly mofo. Jesus Christ. We're going to put a semicolon here because we don't need that anymore. Let's full simplify the damn thing. And that should use some trigonometric expand. No, Jesus Christ. Alright, so this is either just really ugly or there are simplifications here 
um, I'm not seeing. Um, the fact that we can solve it using um, substitutions is just insanely weird, just inherently weird. Um, because mathematics should be able to figure that out for us. All right. Well, okay. Screw it. I just want solution of t. And I'm going to put that over here. Wow, that's not what I wanted at all. I just want the frickin' formula. And, okay, apparently they don't give me that. Damn it, Jim. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm this close to putting all this crap into uh, Mathix and seeing how well it does with it. Because this, with this simplification, Mathix might handle it. So let me go ahead and put all this crap, let me go ahead and ignore all that and put all this crap, starting here, uh, into, I'm going to first put it into the, um, into geodesic.m in a little separate area there. Okay, control C, BC geodesic.m, okay, below from Wolfram Cloud Comps. Okay. Um, Okay. And I guess I got this SP. I don't I guess I decided I don't need these things cuz I'm already defining them somewhere. Um all right. Let's see Mathix. Let's watch you be brilliant as Mathematica because Mathematica doesn't know what the hell it's doing. Um Okay. We'll do this first. We'll do this. Now, I don't know how much it, it'll... I don't know if it'll do rules. That's the, the problem. I don't know if it, it understands substitution rules, which is really bad because um, that is one of the more important features of Mathematica. Okay. But we're good. Path of T. Given rules. <whistles> Very nice. Um... We're not going to do rules T. We're not going to. We don't need this. Um, Ten two thousand six of T. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is exactly what that is. And now, that looks like the derivative. And. Bob's your uncle. Um, okay, I, that might be a little bit excessive. But yeah, that's pretty much the answer. So I think I'm going to put it out as a challenge to someone to do this, meaning that I don't I'm just don't want to do it. Um, basically do this without going through 10 billion variables. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. And now, you know what? Okay. And once again, you know, we've, we've solved the problem. Um, and there's really, really no need to um, to go any further to to get this makes any worse, but you can kind of tell I'm going to. So because I wanted to show off something else and make myself seem even smarter than well, I'm not, but you know whatever. Okay. So full simplify. So this is hideous.
In fact, it's so hideous. Oh, actually, it's I need it to actually print out though. So this is hideous, uh, and that, of course, is just the uh, that's just the solution of T. Uh, we now need to find what the actual um, value is at that path, given the rules two. That is one messed up looking thing here. I'm going to put a semicolon there. The only way I see this could be uh, something interesting uh, is if it turns out that the, the point on the path is very simple to define. That this simplifies a lot for some reason. I don't see why it would, though. Yep, that is some major effing ugliness there. And... <laughs> This is actually the x, y, z point, but we actually want the um, we want the uh, land longitude and latitude. So this is actually going to go x, y, z to spherical of this. I th we can probably do another simplification here if we need to. Um, now that is some freaking impressive impressive looking crap. Once again, we'll simplify the results. I just don't see this coming up good though. Unless there's some sort of magic magic that happens here. Um, let me go ahead and delete this in case that is the answer. And now we let Mathematica think for a while. Wolfram Cloud. Uh, I feel like we need some sort of light jazz music here to to kill some time. Um, we might end up getting a timeout on this calculation. It's that difficult. And what I was hoping to show is if we could get an answer here, um, I could convert that answer to multiple languages uh, really easily. Um, wow, L literally nothing. Yep. Computation has taken too freaking long. Um, so, so we get as far as sol t. We know um, the value of t where that happens, but finding the path is just insane. Okay, so we'll do it this way. <sighs> okay, now what I'm going to do here is... Well, it's evil. I mean, it's very evil. I don't necessarily want to be um, typing out all of this crap myself and converting it from um, from math mathematics or Mathematica or Wolfram Cloud to Perl. So I'm just going to do this. Wherever we see lat, we're going to replace that with dollar sign lat. Evil, 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 evil. And then the same thing if wherever we see dollar sign LNG like this, we're going to replace it with parentheses LNG like this. Okay. Wherever we see right bracket, we're going to replace it with right parentheses. Dun 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 dun. With music from Jaws. Um. And we're going to also lowercase. Uh, cosine and sine, because that is how we do things in Perl. Now I could probably go further than this, but um, I really don't want to. Um, so we will go ahead and do this with sine. But at this point, I think, you know, now I can cut and paste without too much problem. So this is this. Oh, hang on. Now I'm just going to be pedantic and say, I okay, hang on. I want to get rid of spaces between uh, multiplication and whatever. Space star with just star, and then plus with just plus. Oh God! Now I'm just being insanely pedantic. Okay, maybe I'm overdoing it now. 
Okay, so there's this. Dollar sign B equals this. I'm still going to fix it, but just manually now. Dollar sign C equals. Be careful here. This thing here. There will be no spaces except where I allowed them. Okay. Dollar sign D equals this sucker. Dollar sign E equals this little tiny sucker here. By the way, we are recomputing the trigonometric functions multiple times, it appears, although a smart compiler will probably fix this, which Perl doesn't necessarily have one of, uh, so that we're not computing sine of lat b like this many times. Actually, is that the wrong one? Cosine of lat b, cosine of lat b, cosine of lat b. We're doing it four times here, but a smart compiler uh, will just compute it once and reuse the value. Uh, again, I'm not saying that, this, uh, that uh, Perl has a smart compiler. I'm just saying that um, I don't think we need to worry about that unless we, we, we probably could worry about that and we could fix it ourselves by pre-computing the sines and cosines or doing something more sophisticated than that. Um, okay, now we're going to go to x, y, and z, but I'm not worried about that for the moment. I'm aware of it and not worried about it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, undo. That's, that's not what I meant to do. It's right there. No, something is wrong. Um, X is going to be this sucker here. Okay. Y is going to be this sucker here. And Z is going to be this sucker here. And it just occurred to me I probably could have... Ooh. Oh, wow. I could have just... Um, this whole thing into a big list. And instead of having to do all these things, I could just say a, B, my ABC blah 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 blah. So, um, and so once again, I've solved the problem and I'm going to undo it because I'm stupid. All right. Query replace regex. Uh, when I see a when I see an arrow goes to something, I want to replace it with nothingness. Okay, so now we can turn this into a list, to a pearl list. Um, oh wow, is that really too? Let's do this. Okay. space. Now I'm kind of tempted to just do that. Ninety-nine percent I'm going to get this wrong somehow and therefore not only uh, will I have uh, wasted my time, I will also have gotten the wrong answer which is uh, of course the, uh, the key sort of thing you want to do as a programmer. Um, so let's see if there's any spaces in here that I didn't approve of. I did not approve... Oh, I guess I do have to approve of that space. I guess... No, I don't, because it's at the end. I not have to approve that one either. Okay. So now... A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, Z... equal... <laughs> that actually looks kind of nice. I, it looks nice if these numbers, if they, they're the same number here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gorgeous! You're gorgeous! And then... the solution... <laughs> you know, now that we have all this... Um, and I think I'm happy just copying that. Minus A times... Uh, no, I'm not. 
I'll do this and then I'll, I'll turn it into Perl language. Minus a times b plus ugh. I kind of knew I wasn't going to get away with uh, that. Um, all right. Dollar sign a times dollar sign b plus dollar sign b times dollar sign x minus okay that's fine dollar sign c times dollar sign d plus dollar sign c times dollar sign y minus dollar sign e times dollar sign f plus dollar sign f times dollar sign z um, that whole thing over, all right, I'm 99% sure that in Perl uh, you, you use the double star, but I, I tend to get lost with this stuff. Yep, and this will just give you uh, something that's not 25. Okay, so dollar sign... plus dollar sign C squared plus dollar sign F squared. Okay, so that is the value of T that makes um, that, you know, on the geodesic that is going to give us the um, the value of um, that's going to tell us where on the geodesic distance is minimal. Um, that doesn't actually tell us what that minimal distance, or even what that point is actually. Doesn't even tell us what that point is. Um, but let's let's go ahead and look at this because I've written it, and let's see if it's reasonable. We also have to deal with the case where t is um, to do case where t is less than zero or t is greater. Than, it's not a hard case to deal with, but we do need to deal with it. Okay. So so now. Um, oh, I guess we should require BC lib, so I'm going to be using the, um, I'm going to be using the, uh, the degree function from this, the degree, um, degrad. <laughs> degrad converts degrees to radians, yep. Okay. And now, let's go for broke well let's let's do some simple tests here um, let's go from longitude 0 to 10 to longitude 10 to 20 where is 1515 the closest I don't think it's going to actually go through 1515 by the way um, so let's go ahead and profix just remakes sure that all of them are chamoded plus x oh wow really didn't like it though Okay, that's not cool. Rehash so we can get it into the uh, get it into the T shell. Yeah, what the hell have I fucked up now? Cosine, cosine, cosine minus a minus times dollar sign b plus. Um, no, that's dollar sign c times dollar sign d. Wow. Okay, the value of t is 1, uh, which means that this is actually hit after the end of the flight from 0, 10 to 10, 20. Oh, which makes sense, because this is 15. I probably meant to say 5 here. This is going to be closer to 1 half. Oh, wow. Did not as close as I thought, though. Um, so, let's see. How do we compute? At a given t, we now want to compute the... Um, given t... We want to compute the latitude and longitude of this trip. Um, uh, okay, so we know the latitude and longitude is in, in forms that we can't r really use right now. 
um, is this sucker. Or you can just totally ignore me and, and fuck with me. Seriously? It knows that I'm using another program and it hates me for it. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Holy mackerel. So we actually now need to define... Okay. Um, yeah, this... One day someone's going to do a closed form for this. Did I put a to do for that? No, we didn't. To do find closed forms. Going through this many variables makes me feel icky. But if it works, it will be pretty freaking amazing. Okay, so we want to find where, where the path of t is, so point d, so that's going to be um, point b is going to be uh, from spherical to xyz coordinates of long b, lat b, and 1. Point D is going to be the same thing for uh, longitude of D, latitude of D, and 1, because the, the radius of the sphere doesn't matter. And now we're going to do a combination of the two, but we've got to be a little careful here because I don't think Perl will let you... Um, That's a damn good question. Will Perl let you add lists like that? And I think it actually... Oh, okay, well, that's not what I meant. Okay, hang on. Um, and I don't think this is going to work. It's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know what the hell that means. Um... Actually, if I think in Perl, this is actually what a list is. No, didn't like that either. Um, so apparently the answer is you, you cannot add lists like this. Um, I think what we're getting here is a pointer reference or something really strange. Uh, but the, 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 the upshot is you can't actually... Um, my um, point T is the point that dollar sign T corresponds to. Um, less than three, dollar sign I plus plus, point T equals of I equals point B of I plus T times point D of I minus point B of I. You know, I think all, this is already not worth it. I mean, we, we've kind of reached that point where we're just going to say, um, mismatch parentheses. Oh, yeah, I need to do this, then this. And now we can debug point T, which should come out as a three-element three, three element array. Um... That's not what I meant to do. Yep. That's what happens when you keep switching between languages. You forget the frickin' everything. Okay, why don't we print out, um... I mean... That doesn't seem to be too bad. You should have been able to do that. Why is PTT empty? All right, let's see. And I probably should have uh, multiplied these by um, even though zero, you don't need to do it. Degrees to radians, degrees to radians. Although this should not have an effect of why this isn't working. Degrees to radians. Degrees to radians. Degrees to radians. I probably could have actually just done a map, couldn't I? Oh, well. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, not good. All right. 
Oh. Yeah. It would be good if I declared it as a list, which is what it is. Okay, that seems a little bit suspicious. Uh, I mean, dollar sign t is close to, to one. Nope, once again. Um, this might be a good time to use Perl minus w. Um, yeah. And once again, it would be good th if these were lists and not, not scalars. Um, okay, awesome. In the sense of I have no idea where the hell that is. Um, but let's see, is that point T? And I think that's actually not going to extend all the way out to the um, uh, to the sphere, but that's okay. We don't need it to. Um, my um, my spherical point T is going to be these x y z coordinates to spherical of point T. And then, I think, finally, I can print that. I think this is going to be the answer we're really looking for. Probably not, though. Oh, actually, it is, yeah. Um, and now, I'm going to, of course... Um, okay, I'm going to be a little bit careful here. I'm going to take point 0.2 sphere of 0 and divide that by uh, degrad, so that'll take us from radians back to degrees. Same thing with one, and of course this two, the last one is just the uh, radius, which we don't even really care about because it turns out um, that we don't, that we just need the coordinates, we don't need the radius. Let's see what this does though. Um, that is fantastically cool. I wonder if there's a way to force it to evaluate though. That's probably just going to break stuff. Nope. Okay, so we're just going to do it this way. We'll get it on three different lines, but the first two will be in degrees. And now, the closest this thing reaches is 4.91 comma 15.08 to 5 comma 15. And that, you have to admit, is pretty damn good. Now let's see what the closest it is, so 10, 0, 10 to 10, 20. Let's go 0, 10, um, yeah, I'm trying to find something more realistic here. Um, this probably will not work because I don't have the database I need here, but we can, we can get it going. Whoa, hang on. Okay, it's BC City find. And it's going to tell me that it doesn't have the database that it needs. No such column. Um, okay, well that's actually... Uh, let's see, sites db, geonames 2.db, mount xdrive, geonames... This is all the places that geonames 2db can be. I'm going to go ahead and go over here into the uh, other machine, and I'm going to go ahead and link in um, geonames 2db. If I can find the damn thing. Mount xdrive. What? Really? I think I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. Okay, here we go. That was really strange. That shouldn't have worked. Oh, it did though. Oh, actually, let me move that to the home user directory. Um, and let's see if it made it. So I presumably we should now see GeoNames2DB. 
Yeah, wow, nice. Okay. And all I've got to do now is tell this thing that that's another possible path for um, for where Geonium's 2db might be. Let's see if that works. I'll be impressed if it does. Well, that didn't work. I'm sorry, BC City Find, is it 2 or BC City Find 1? One sec. Oh, it is just BC City Find. I don't know what 2 does, but it doesn't work. And, wow. That is pretty damn good. Um, is it Portland? No, Tokyo. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. That's pretty damn cool. Um, I kind of wish I'd you know, put a less in front of it. Alrighty, so let's just see here. And... I'm going to be a little bit careful here because... Um, because I don't know how well Pearl's going to combine these things. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to even put a deg rad here. So that's latitude, that's longitude, this is the latitude. Um, and I guess we should just call this Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Albuquerque, which I should have memorized by now, you'd think. And... that. And Tokyo is actually Narita Airport, although I guess what I'm looking at is the, the elevation of the latitude and longitude of Tokyo itself. Um, okay. Um, so we're going from Dallas Fort Worth to Narita, and I want to see how close we get to Albuquerque. And then we're going to convert everything here to um, this. And in theory, I should be able to just call it like this, because Pearl is flexible like that. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, wow. 34.81. Um, that does not seem correct at all. Stand by. Um... Okay. And the return here is going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be um, longitude 34, latitude 4, that doesn't goes nowhere near that. So clearly something has gone wrong here. Um, well actually I should do it after I multiply everything by degrad. Um, yeah, that's a little bit weird, because, oh, maybe because I can't do, I think you can't append lists like this in Perl. Also, much bigger problem is that these were scalars, not lists. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, and then, let's see what that does. Okay. So the closest point that gets there, and this 259 is um, something we need to deal with, but it's not a huge thing. Minus 100 degrees, and then 35.72. Uh, and then we need to find the distance. That's actually not that close to Albuquerque. Um, Uh, yeah, that's actually not super close, but anyway. And then we need to find the distance from that point to C. And in this case, we could actually probably just use the GCD formula, the GC distance formula that we already know. 
Um, and I want to make sure we have it in BC lib.pl. We do. Latitude, longitude, and it's got to be in that order. Um, in miles. So let's see if this is... Uh, okay. And we are using radians. So that's good. Um, the latitude of the point is that. The longitude of the point is that. And then what is point, um, oh, point C is just lat C, long C. And we've broken something. Uh, and that is, we need to finish off our debug statement. Um, 441 miles? Okay, that does not seem correct to me. Um... This times 57, roughly speaking. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. I'm using a different version of calc here. 35 degrees latitude, okay. I've also, um... Okay, and also the, uh, the, 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 the point where they're close is, um... Is this also? Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Uh, now these two numbers look like they're really far away, but they're really pretty close to each other because... Uh, the world is, like, circular-ish. Okay. And then this... What? Okay. So, that 441 seems like a long distance there. Uh, but who knows? Well, that's actually a hell of a long distance. That's longer than the distance from... Let's see if I uh, did something wrong here. Um, am I calling GC distance? It's latitude and longitude. It's in that order. Um, and this... The sign here suggests it really is the latitude, not the... Um, not... Um, not that I've actually reversed the instructions. Okay. So kind of a uh, interesting puzzle here. Now, of course, I, this is the Great Circle from Dallas-Fort Worth to Tokyo. Not... Well, let me see if I can get Narita on here. If that helps, I'll be s surprised. Not Natira, although there is this apparently a city called that. Narita. Um... Let's go ahead and put that in here. Very, very close, though. Longitude is this. Latitude, it's a little bit to the north of Tokyo City proper. But if this makes a difference, I will be shocked. A, a major difference. Yeah, that didn't really change the distance at all. 441 miles. Um, well, then I'm wondering if there's something just totally wrong with what I'm doing here. And, um, what if I put Narita at zero, zero? If that still gives the same answer, obviously something's wrong here. Okay, something's very wrong here. Um, so, uh, so something is broken. Uh, so something, something weird went on here. Um, yeah. There's no way that's always going to be 441.67. I don't know what it is exactly, but I think... Um, huh. Yeah, we'll need to figure this out. Okay, well I've now been streaming for... 
One hour fifty minutes. That's not a bad considering I've streamed three other times today. Thank you for watching the stream. We will pick this up next time.